Experts worldwide are obsessed by this. Item MS-408 of the Rare Book and Manuscript Library at Yale University, its current home. The first impression was that it's uh, extraordinarily bizarre, but that it's also oddly familiar. On one level, it looks like something you've seen before, but the more you look at it, the more you realize that it's really like nothing you've seen before. This mysterious book is better known as the Voynich Manuscript. It was discovered in 1912 by rare book dealer Wilfred Voynich in a Jesuit library near Rome. Its author has never been revealed. Stephen Crystal Mallis is a linguistics expert. Throughout history, there must have been tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of languages spoken, most of which are now long extinct. The Voynich Manuscript is fascinating because it's so close to something that we could decipher and we could read. Many of the letters look like letters in the Roman alphabet, and yet, as soon as you get into it, it falls to pieces. Linguists call the text found in the Voynich Manuscript Voynichese. If it is indeed a language, its complex design make it almost impossible to recognize. While it appears to have some familiar characters, what they mean and how they relate to each other has experts baffled. There would be a big market for something like this, precisely because it's so strange and rare and because it's so secret. For a Renaissance banker, owning a manuscript was like uh, owning a Van Gogh to a modern-day uh, Wall Street banker. It shows that you're about more than money. Even if there was a financial incentive to create the manuscript, how could its author make it appear as technically consistent as real language? Most people had previously assumed that to create something the size of the Voynich manuscript as meaningless gibberish would take decades. If you try making up gibberish out of your head, it's surprisingly difficult. You start repeating yourself over and over again. That would be easily detectable. But Professor Rugg has an incredible new theory. Creating the manuscript was actually easy. Today, he's going to put his theory to the test. I think that what we'll see today is large quantities of text coming out, text which has got similar characteristics to Voynich's in different ways. I think another thing we'll see today is how quickly text can be produced using this method, whether or not it would be feasible to use this method to produce a meaningless hoax for profit. Gordon hopes his experiment will reveal how the author created an indecipherable manuscript quickly and easily. To begin, Gordon uses three world-class calligraphers. Working on a table consisting of 600 blank squares, they copy random syllables from the manuscript into the squares, leaving some of them blank. Three squares are then cut in random positions from heavy cardboard called a grill. The grill is then placed anywhere on the table. This simple technique reveals a Voynichese word. Finally, the word is copied onto a page of manuscript. The grill is then slid to the right and repeated. Using this method, the entire Voynich manuscript could be created in weeks. These people have produced text that looks like Voynichese. They've produced it fast. At this speed, you'd be able to produce the entire manuscript in a matter of weeks with a team like this. So I think this shows that my method's certainly feasible. The experiment suggests that the author could have created the Voynich manuscript quickly and out of greed. 